Hey guys, today I have five more ways to use the magnetic mask in Final Cut Pro. I made a video like this a while ago and you guys loved it, so I'm back with five more. And of course, I'm saving my favorite for last, but don't jump ahead. YouTube will let me know if you do. Now, if you're a total noob to the magnetic mask and you're looking for a step-by-step -step tutorial, this is not that. I already made that video and I will link to it down below, but for everyone else, this video is all about the inspiration. Let's dive right in. So last time we did this, I showed you how to add text behind objects in Final Cut Pro with the magnetic mask. This time I'm going to show you how to add text inside of an object. So I've got this motivational mountain shot here and we're gonna place text inside this left side of the mountain. So the first thing I'm going to do is duplicate my clip from my primary storyline by selecting it, holding down the option key and clicking and dragging to make a connected copy of that clip. Then I'm going to select the bottom clip again hit the V key to disable it and select the top clip and let's apply the magnetic mask. And I'm going to mask out our mountain. Once it's finished, we're going to hit the done button and you can see that I've successfully cut out my mountain. Now what we're going to do is select that connected clip and in the inspector on the magnetic mask line, drop down here and deselect invert. And now we've got a hole where our mountain should be. Now what I'm going to do is take this animating text I've already created. This is like an inspirational quote to go with our mountain scene. And I'm going to drag it underneath our magnetic masked video and above the original clip on our primary storyline. And then I'm going to enable that clip. So you can see now our text over the mountain, but it's actually masked out in the shape of the mountain as well. So what I'm going to do at this point is head on over to the title inspector and I want to rotate my text and reposition it so it feels like it's in line with the left side of our mountain. You can see the mountain kind of has a pyramid shape. So I wanna mimic that angle. So I'm gonna use the X and Y rotation to get my placement correct. Now what I don't want is for the text to be visible on this lighter side of the mountain here. So we are going to use a shape mask to crop out this side of the text. So in our effects browser, let's grab that shape mask and drop it onto our text. And in the video inspector, I'm gonna modify the shape, the size and the angle to align with our mountain side. And then I'm going to pump up the feather to give us a bit of a soft edge right around this corner. And now this is obviously a drone shot, so I also want to track the text to the side of the mountain so the motion matches up a little bit. So I'm going to disable my magnetic masked video and my text. I'm going to select the original clip on my primary storyline. Let's add a tracker, and I'm going to track this exposed rock section right here on the side of the mountain. If you wanna know more about motion tracking in Final Cut Pro, I'll link to that tutorial down below as well. Okay, now I'm just going to enable my text and attach it to our object track. And I'm gonna disable the rotation. I never like the rotational track in Final Cut Pro. So now our text is moving and then I'll enable my top video so we can see that effect. And a few last steps here that are totally subjective. I am going to select this text and I'm going to change the blend mode from normal to screen. And so I'm maintaining that texture of my mountain inside my text. And I'm going to go one step further here and drop in a solid color underneath my text. I'm going to apply the same shape mask we applied to our text just by dragging it right from the inspector. And then on this solid color, I'm just gonna color pick right from the lighter side of the mountain. And from that color selection, I'm gonna bring it to a darker shade. And then back in the video inspector, I'm just gonna dial down the opacity a little bit. I think this helps make the text pop. And then last thing we need to do is just add cross dissolves to either side of that color solid. And there is our look. My next idea for you is a transition. So transitioning from this shot to this shot. So I'm going to take my incoming shot, this is going to be my second shot, and connect it to my outgoing shot on the primary storyline. Let's apply that magnetic mask to this circular saw and let it track. And now we're going to keyframe the Y position of this circular saw. So I'm gonna cue up my playhead to the beginning of that incoming clip. 
I'm going to add a keyframe on the position line on the transform tools in the inspector. And I'm going to raise the Y value so that my circular saw is at a frame. And then I'm going to arrow over, I don't know, seven frames. I'm going to select that Y position again and just give it a value of zero. So, so far, this is where we're at. My circular saw is dropping into the frame. Now I'm going to hit control V to expand the keyframe view in my timeline. I'm going to cute my playhead to that second keyframe and I'm going to trim my outgoing shot to that point and use the blade tool to split my connected clip in half. Right click on the second half of my incoming clip and overwrite to primary storyline. And then also in the inspector, I'm going to disable the magnetic mask. And then I'm going to take that connected clip and I'm going to expand it out a few frames. So what I've done by doing this is ensured that my connected version of the circular saw and the one that's now on my primary storyline are totally in sync. I'm not missing or adding any extra frames here in this configuration. Now I'm going to switch to the trim tool by hitting the T key and I'm going to use the trim tool to slide that cut point to the right and add a few frames past the keyframe here in my connected clip. And I'm going to add a cross dissolve and I'm going to shrink the length of that cross dissolve. Pretty short. Looks like we're about six frames there. And there is our transition. So the circular saw comes in and then that shot becomes full frame. My next Final Cut Pro magnetic mask idea is a riff on the transition you just saw. So if you felt like that transition was a little too heavy handed, this one might be more your taste. So I've got these two desert scene shots here and I've got the outgoing clip stacked on top of the incoming clip, just like you saw me do with the last transition. Let's apply that magnetic mask and I'm going to mask out this camel. Now that our camel is cut out, I'm going to go through the same steps you saw me do before in the last transition, which is to split this clip, trim the outgoing clip, overwrite to primary storyline, disable the magnetic mask and then extend the connected clip. This is how we know we're not missing any frames. And I'm going to again, enable the trim tool. And this time I'm going to use the trim tool to move that cut point to the left. And now after this, we just need to add dissolves at the start of our connected clip and between the clips on our primary storyline. And so now while we're still seeing that wide desert shot, we're revealing the camel and then dissolving to the camel shot full screen. It's just a very elevated dissolve transition. My next idea is called the glow up. I'm going to show you how to add a glow effect around anything in your video using the magnetic mask. So we're going to start with this very creepy robotic hand hitting a keyboard and it lights up. So I've got this clip on my primary storyline. Let's duplicate it and magnetic mask out that hand. I'm going to disable our original shot and I'm going to make another copy of our magnetic masked shot by clicking and dragging. So now I have three versions. The top one has the mask on it. The second one has the mask on it and the third one is full frame. Let's disable the top shot. And in the effects browser, we are going to reach for the colorize effect. And here is where we're going to need to pick the color of our glow. So the first thing I'm going to do is crank up the intensity all the way. Let's pick a color for our glow. I'm going to go like a pinky purpley. And we want to remap the blacks and whites to the same color. So we've got a solid color silhouette of that robotic hand. Now we're going to add the Gaussian blur and then enable our top clip, which is masked out, but it does not have any effects on it. And there is your glow. Now you can add a gradiated glow around this by selecting your center shot and making another duplicate of it. This time I'm going to disable the top shot and the second shot and the bottom shot. Why not? And on this one, I'm going to pick a second color like so. And then on the blur, we're going to crank up the blur boost. And from here, you can fine tune the way you want your glows to look. What I like to do is change the blend mode on these to add. And there is our glow up look. All right, it's almost time for me to reveal my fifth and favorite idea for the magnetic mask. But before we get to that, if you like what you're seeing in Final Cut Pro, but you want to be a stronger Final Cut Pro editor, you may want to enroll in my courses, Final Cut Rockstar and Rockstar Next Level, available at jenjager.com. 
It is so much more efficient to learn Final Cut through a structured course like Final Cut Rockstar instead of just watching random videos here on YouTube. I give you all the media to download so we work side by side building a project together, getting more and more complex as we go. I get great feedback on both of these courses. I'm so proud of them. So if you want to know more about Final Cut Pro, head on over to jenjagger.com. All right, my last magnetic mask idea for you, I'm calling the social post. So you want to start with a mock-up like this one of a social media post. And there's tons of websites online that will generate these for free. This is going to be a blue sky post because shocker, I am no longer on Facebook, but I am on blue sky. So come follow me if you are on there too. And I'll link to the website that generated this free post for me down below. And that site does ask you to provide an image. I just put in a 16 by nine gray rectangle because we're actually going to cut this out and fill it with video anyway. So I'm going to drop this post onto my primary storyline, but you can see the dimensions of it aren't quite right. I have a black space on either side of the post. So we're just going to fill that in with the solid color and I'm going to color pick right from my post, but you can see that I do have like some edges on the perimeter of my post here. So not to worry, I'm gonna select my post in my primary storyline, head on over to the inspector, and I'm just really quick gonna crop left and right to crop out those hard edges. So everything looks seamless. Now I'm gonna drop in a shot of this super cute dog and I'm gonna extend the length of my still images to be as long as my shot here. And then I'm going to select that dog and I'm going to duplicate it and disable the bottom one. Let's apply the magnetic mask to the upper clip of my dog. And here's the trick. I am going to want to track just like the dog's face and ears. And I'm going to try to avoid its little butt here on the right side. So this may take some fine tuning with the magnetic mask. Now, the reason I'm no longer on Facebook is kind of a wild story in and of itself. If you guys are curious what happened, let me know in the comments and I'll make a short about it. Okay, we're done tracking our dog and we had success just tracking kind of the front part of his body. And now I'm going to disable that top shot too. So we're now looking at our blue sky post and I am going to apply a shape mask. And what I'm going to do is reduce the feather entirely. And, and I'm gonna play with the size and position of this mask. So I'm just masking out my gray rectangle. And I'm gonna play with the curvature a little bit to round out those corners as best as I can. And then we're going to select invert mask. So we've cut out that gray rectangle. If I disable my color solid, you can see we just have a hole here. So now what I wanna do is take the shot of my dog that we did not magnetic mask out. I'll enable him here. And I'm going to move him down in my stack below the post mockup, but above my solid color. And now still selected on that clip, let's hold down the command key and select the other version of our dog. And I am just going to, in the inspector, move both of those shots in unison over like so. I want the dog's head to be over to the right. Then I'm just gonna click in the gray spot in my timeline and now select this bottom dog shot again so I'm not affecting my top dog. And I'm going to crop to the right so we don't see that video hanging out over the right side of our social post. And now we're going to enable our magnetic masked dog. And this clip I'm going to crop from the bottom. And there is our last idea for the magnetic mask. I love this little dog. He's so cute. Which of these ideas was your favorite? If you missed my first compilation of magnetic mask ideas, I'm going to link to it right here. And I'm going to let YouTube pick out something it thinks you're going to like right down here. You guys, thank you so much for hanging out.